The Nectong was a pretty useful river. No king ever had a moat around his castle so wide and protecting. It felt like a new division was in the lines. Plenty of outgoing mail went across the Nectong River. If you've seen combat, you know what it is to have a line, a place to fight from. Well, for the first time in this Korean business, we had something we could call a line. All during the fighting, we had air power. If they had had it, we might have been through. Air power did plenty of damage to everything the enemy had and wanted to bring up. Those guys flew so low, they should have had bayonets on their propellers. In a corner of Korea, a little bigger than a beachhead, we dug in, built a village of foxholes. Only here, you couldn't dig too deep on account of the rocks. On this beachhead, a lot of the boys who flew in at the beginning were still around, still smiling. There's waiting in every war. Time to find out where you were, how you were doing. We faced the enemy. We faced ourselves. Our enemies were fanatics. We were believers in one faith, that men can live together peacefully, thinking, feeling, worshiping, each in his own way. You couldn't think about anything for very long when you were planning new moves, new delaying tactics. We pulled down the bridges. We wrecked the roads. The steep hills around us were rugged. We'd made them more rugged for the enemy. Beyond our foxholes, we unwound some vines of our own with thorns. And beyond the tight ring of our perimeter, the enemy closed in, pushing us hard, threatening the death blow that would throw us back into the sea. How long could we hold? How long? The battle hung in the balance. And then swung to us. A great force reached Korea in a new strategy that gave the North Korean army a battle from three sides at once. Placements, new units, lively, ready for business. They stole along the hills, slipped up the ridges, looking for a soft spot in the enemy's hard shell. We gave it to them steady, all up and down the line, all at once. The air dusty, smoky. This was what we used to get when we first hit Korea. Victory never comes easily. You have to be in a fight to see how tough it is. See how in an attack, guys stumble back, needing others to look after them. Always plenty of trouble. It takes men and machines to knock out a strong enemy. And as you go forward, you can expect to lose some of those who start out with you. Yes, some went back, their feet heavy, their steps slow. Kids who became men, men whose hollow-faced look showed that they'd been in the lines too long. You can't count on a straight road to victory. Sometimes it winds, goes down, goes up. Sometimes you're forced to detour. You can pick out the new troops. They walk different. 
another outfit. But once over, they were like the fellas in our outfit when we landed. The same smiling Yanks, making the best of everything. And a little better than that. We battled for time in Korea and won. We had the right men. Good men. Good soldiers. Those were the first 40 days in Korea. We took our losses, regrouped, and gained new strength in the Pusan perimeter. We held that ground despite many determined efforts to throw us back into the sea. Those North Koreans were yet to feel the strength of the 8th Army, an army that proved to be the greatest the world has yet seen. Next week, the big picture will show the turning of the tide You'll see the fight to hold on to that Pusan perimeter. You'll see how our troops received air support from our carriers, the invasion of Walmi, and the march on Seoul. And you'll hear another report from a combat veteran who saw, as it happened, a part of the big picture. This is Captain Carl Zimmerman inviting you to be with us then. <laughs>